Hi, I'm Tim Bowden and welcome to Sorrel, a town just 30 minutes drive from Hobart, Tasmania, Australia's only island state. Tasmania is promoted as the natural state because of its large and relatively unspoiled environment. Sorrel is one of Tasmania's oldest towns and today is a popular service centre for local farms, light industry and growing suburbs. Sorrel was also once home to one of Australia's best-known war cine cameramen, Neil Davis. I'll begin by introducing the town's history, a special old shed and an idea. Historically, Sorrel was a major town on the road from Hobart to Port Arthur on the Tasman Peninsula. In 1883, a parliamentary survey laid the groundwork for a railway between Kangaroo Point, now Bellarive on the shores of the Derwent River, and Sorrel. There was much controversy, but work began in 1890 and the line was opened in May 1892. A goods and passenger service was maintained on the line until its closure in June 1926 due to declining traffic and increasing maintenance costs. The train and carriages were housed and serviced at the Sorrel end of the line. The train station building and the carriage shed still exist in Sorrel today. Sadly, other historic buildings were lost in the catastrophic 1967 bushfires. The train station building is now used as a private house and antique store. The carriage shed is unused and in disrepair, but is a rare surviving industrial building, heritage listed and directly related to Tasmanian railway and steam locomotive history, certainly worthy of restoration and a new life. A group of concerned community members have rallied together to form a working group actively putting together restoration plans and attracting private and government interest. This working group believes the carriage shed, once restored, should also be a tribute to one of Tasmania's finest sons, Neil Davis. The restoration will involve the entire structure. The original timber frames will be on full display with the claddings and rebuilt windows. Electronic information boards will be positioned centrally to allow the full interior to be viewed and enjoyed by visitors. The grounds surrounding the building will be landscaped with an assortment of water-friendly native vegetation, some information boards, pathways and car park facilities. Once the building has been transformed into the Neil Davis Exhibition Centre, it will involve multiple uses for its generous 176 square metres of floor space. One area will be used by community groups for meetings and will have the latest technology, including interactive whiteboards and comfortable seating. An area in the middle of the building has been allocated for local railway history. Visitors can experience this through interactive information boards while standing on a glass-covered rebuilt railway line complete with original line and sleepers just as it was within the original building. Another area has been set aside to enable local talented artists to display their work for a particular audience or the general public. This area will be dynamic, updated regularly and displays advertised locally. Finally, the largest area has been allocated for the Neil Davis story. This space, as you enter the building, will educate visitors about Davis, his desires, his generosity, his skills, his adventures, his bravery and achievements. Thank you for your time. If you'd like to support our endeavour, please drop us a line by email. Our working group chairperson is Carmel Terranius, whose email address is carmeltor, that's C-A-R-M-E-L-T-O-R, at bigpond.com. As Neil Davis's biographer and friend, I'd like to claim the last word. It was remarkable enough that Neil covered frontline combat in the Indochina War for 11 years, the only Western correspondent to go out 
with South Vietnamese and Cambodian soldiers in the field. His exclusive footage was broadcast in a hundred countries. Wounded many times, once badly, he believed, paradoxically, that the front line was the safest place to be to capture combat at its most immediate and vivid. His philosophy of life was written in the front pages of every one of his work diaries. One hour of glorious life is worth an age without a name. <laughs>